All right, gang, so we are gonna be doing a lot of experiments in this class, and one of the important things that you need to understand how to do is how to write a scientific hypothesis. And there, there's lots of different ways to do this. Um, this is how we're gonna do it in, in our class. So first thing is I want you to understand what the, the big ideas for this video are. Um, we're gonna review the independent and dependent variables and how to recognize those. We're gonna talk about how you would write an if-then hypothesis, and then I've just got some examples for you. So here's, here's what's going on. Um, in 2004, I moved back to Michigan and bought a house. So this is, this is the aerial view of, of my house. Um, the problem was is I live on this road where somewhere about 15 or so years ago, some farmer decided to like scrape everything off of his uh, field and build a bunch of houses. So there was no, when we moved in, there were no trees at all. Now, in this picture that you see right here, um, there all those trees there, because I put them in. Now, one of the first trees that I was really excited to get in were apples. Now, I love apple trees. Um, and uh, my favorite kind is John of Gold apples. And in fact, I planted uh, two of those trees. Now, the problem is, is that we found that after a few years, when they were finally big enough to start having apples, um, none of them, I couldn't eat any of them because they would have this, these, these worms, these nasty worms. And I think, what were they called? Um, like, uh, what are they? Coddling moths, that's what it is, coddling moths. So these, these moths, they like to um, put their larva in these kind of apples. And it's just really, really disgusting. And it makes me really mad because I wanna have these, these apples. But my wife is paranoid that if we spray, it's gonna kill off a bunch of the good bugs and we're all gonna die a horrible, painful death. And I, I understand where she's coming from. I just want apples, that's, that's it. So I've been doing a little bit of, of research and found that if you're looking for organic ways of, of keeping um, worms out of, your, out of your apples, you can get this Tanglefoot uh, sticky tree bands and you put them around the, the trunk of the tree and then supposedly when the larva and things like that come, try to like climb up, they get stuck there and then your apples will be fine. So I thought, you know what? Let's talk about that in science. So let's use this to talk about how to write a hypothesis. So the first thing that you do is whenever you are writing a hypothesis, you need to start with, uh, with a question or a problem. We've talked a lot about how or what's, what a scientific question is. So here's the question that, that I'm going to use. Will, will Tanglefoot sticky tree bands prevent worms from eating the apples on my tree? So this is a very important question. The next thing we have to do is you have to start thinking about the variables that are involved. Um, so if my question is, will Tanglefoot sticky tree bands prevent worms from eating the apples on my tree? Then I need to figure out what my independent variables are, what my dependent variables are, and then any of those control or constant variables that, that we talked about. So just as a little review, remember that uh, the independent variables, those are the, the variables that, that we're in charge of, that we're in control of, of measuring. The dependent variables, we, we're also measuring those, we just aren't in control of them. Those depend on the independent variables. So in this case, with the, the Tanglefoot sticky tree bands, and keeping worms from eating the apples, the independent variable, what I'm in charge of, I'm in charge of whether or not I'm gonna put the tree bands on those trees. For the dependent variable, well, I'm looking at, that, that's gonna affect the apples, so, or the, the number of apples that have worms in them. So ideally, the, the number of apples that have worms on them will depend on the, whether or not there's tree bands on my, on my trees. And also, just as a review, some of the control or constants, we wanna make sure that we're, we're talking about the same kind of apple tree here. Who knows, maybe um, different kinds of apple trees have this problem and others don't. We wanna make sure that they're in like the same yard, the same sunlight, so all, we wanna make sure that everything stays the same except those tree bands. So once we, once we get that, we wanna make sure that we have a testable statement related to the question. So the, the hypothesis is gonna be, be related to that question. So let me show you how that works. 
what we're going to do is we're going to write an if-then statement. And what the, the reason why it was so important to identify those independent and dependent variables was because this is where they, they have special spots in that if-then statement. So the way it works is if the independent variable changes somehow, then how will the dependent variable change? So let's, let me give you the example here. So once again, our question is, will the tanglefoot sticky tree bands prevent worms from eating apples on the tree? Well, we want to make that if-then statement, that if-then hypothesis related to that question. And we know that the independent variable are the tree bands. The dependent variable are they, the apples. So let me write this as an if-then statement. I could say, if I put independent variable, tanglefoot sticky tree bands on my apple trees, then, dependent variable, the number of apples with, with worms will decrease. So do you see how I did that? That if part has the independent variable changing somehow, and the then part has the dependent variable changing somehow. So let's do, let me give you an example. Let's say we want to see how does the amount of light affect the growth of a plant. So that's our scientific question. So let's make a hypothesis out of that. So I'm going to look at this now. The, the one that I'm in control of is the amount of light that is shining on that tree. The dependent variable is going to be the how much the plant grows. And we should probably be more specific with that because there's lots of different ways that a plant could grow. I'm just going to say how tall it grows. So our so with our setup, our if then, so remember that if the independent variable changes somehow, then the dependent variable is going to change. So in this case, let's say if the amount of light increases, then the plant will grow taller. Or if I wanted to, I can make a statement that says if the amount of light decreases, then the plant will grow, grow taller. Or if the amount of light decreases, then the plant will, will be shorter. There's lots of different ways to, to do that. And all of those are correct as long as it's written correctly in the if-then way. Because remember, a hypothesis is just an educated guess. It's an educated statement um, about what we think is going to happen. So here's what we need to do. In order for you to get credit for this, I want you to take a look at this question. And then I want you to do the independent variable, or identify the independent variable, identify the dependent variable, and then write an if-then hypothesis. So here's your question. Does drinking coffee make your teeth yellow? Let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you soon.